Yerushalayim. I used to go to him for Havdalah often, and he's the one that asked this question. Why was Chayshev the worst? In his inimitable style, he would answer, you're right that in the earlier plagues, the Egyptians lost much more human and animal life. That's true. But in those plagues, at least the people had each other. Someone to commiserate with, someone to take comfort in, someone to wipe away a tear. In the plague of Chayshev, the Pasuk says, which means in one word, we were alone. And Reb Shapsiud Alevich would storm. There is no feeling in the world more miserable than being made to feel alone. Nothing. I have the privilege of being a third generation American Rav. I'm in the Rabbanus 25 years. My father, a Goyen and a Tzadik, was in the Rabbanus 40 years. My Zaydi, Rabbi Yisr Shapiro, was a Rav in Pittsburgh almost 50 years. A Rav can tell you, people will come all the time and say, I can handle a great amount. I can handle this and that. The one thing I cannot handle is being made to feel alone. There isn't anything more miserable than being made to feel alone. And I want to make it clear, I'm not referring merely or only to a person who's alone, meaning living alone. That's not what I mean. When I go through a hard time, when I feel I'm being bullied, when I feel that people are going up against me, when I feel that an avla or was something was wrong, I was ba'avot. How dare a person stand by and not come to my side or to your side or to our side? People can handle a lot. You can hear it from the saddest people, but I cannot handle being made to feel alone. And so that's why our Shapsi Levitch would say, Chayshech, from all of the Makhlis, I'm not including Makhlis Bechayris, that's going to leave by itself, was by far the worst. Because no one in Klal Yisrael, when going through a situation, whether it's physical, psychological, financial, or emotional, no one should ever, ever, ever be made to feel alone. Because when they do, it's Chayshech. And there ain't nothing as bad as Chayshev, period. <coughs> and so the way to properly remove darkness is the way we correctly put in the title, you got to be naisei ba'olim chaveiroi. You have to feel, at least to the best of our ability, there's a sign that I have on a filing cabinet that I really try to live by. I try never to speak about anything if I can walk the walk and talk the talk, I try. The sign says, I don't care how much you know until I know how much you care. Do you think that when I'm going through a difficult situation, I'm interested in you wowing me with mathematical computations and permutations and erudition? I'm really not interested. The only thing I want to know is that you care. I just mentioned to the Braun family, they were kind enough to host me a few years ago in Los Angeles, that I have a brother-in-law, Rav Yitzchak Mitnik, amongst the number of things that he does, he's very, very involved in Kiru. But not now when it's so beautiful and fashionable, I'm going back 40 years. In fact, I never liked stereotyping, it's bad. But in the 80s, when the Jewish Observer came out with their famous double issue, so I think in the 80s, children that were having a hard time were called teens at risk. I think in the 90s, they were called teens on the fence. In the year 2000, they changed it to be teens on the fringe. And now they're called teens taking the scenic route. They're taking the scenic route, but hold on, about will be there. My brother-in-law really worked the magic with these children. I won't say the name of the family for reasons that are obvious. It's a family that's before him in America that I'm very close to. 
will call the name of their teenager David. They brought David in the beginning of Thomas to Rabbi Yitzchak and Flatbush and said, work your magic. My brother-in-law realized it would be difficult, but of course he would try. The next day was Bay's Tammuz. It was a day of Priya Satira. My brother-in-law lived down the block from Landau's. For those from Brooklyn, Flatbush, Landau's is a minion factory, 21 hours a day, hundreds of minion and thousands of people. My brother-in-law figured that when they auction off the Aliyah, he'll buy Shlishi for David because there isn't anything that removes Cheshav more than letting somebody know that you care. It came time for Kriya Satayra, the Gabbai starts the auction, and my brother-in-law says five dollars for Shlishi. Somebody on the other side of the shul says ten. My brother-in-law says twenty. And then it begins. Fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, it started to sound like it would have been a bidding war for Psich of Ne'ilah Yen Kippur. These things go for a few dollars. Somebody told my brother-in-law, Reb Yitzchak, give up, because you're bidding against the Lubavitch Chosid. Tonight is Gimel Talmud. It's the yard site of the Rebbe, and he's going to Eretz Yisrael, and he wants in the schuss of the Rebbe to have a safe flight. That's all my brother-in-law needed to hear. If you've ever seen him, he's a large, large, imposing person. Clearly, I'm looking at someone who knows him. He checked in his wallet that he had $120. He slammed on the table, $120 shlishi! Nobody <coughs> thought he would pass out. Meanwhile, the Chabad person, he's no fool. He went to the next minion and bought shlishi for five bucks. <laughs> When my brother-in-law went to pay, the Gabbai said to him, Reb Yitzchok, it was paid for already. What do you mean paid for? I didn't pay. He says, that guy over there paid. My brother-in-law goes over to a guy in his mid-fifties. I'm not going to say from where or his name. And he says, you paid for my aliyah? He said, I did, $120. Why? Who are you? And tearing and crying, he says to my brother-in-law, I saw what you did for that boy. Forty years ago, I was that boy. But I didn't have anyone to do for me what you did for that boy, and so I wanted to pay for his aliyah. Now, parenthetically, if you fast forward, David turned his life around beautifully. I couldn't be at his wedding. His brother is my closest. We're very good friends, the family. I couldn't be at the chasana, but the night he got married about 15 years ago, when it was in the middle of the first dance, when he just came in, I mamish in my room. I put on the phone, the music, and I was dancing in my room, mamish half the night at David's chasana, although I wasn't there. All people want to know is that you care. And if you're willing to be nice, you could remove darkness. I said it when I started, I'll repeat it. I'm entitled to feel that it's the game changer. And the more people that I meet crisscrossing the globe, not only won't I change my mind, I'm convinced. At the root of everything is to properly be When people, as we said last night, for those who were here, to set aside differences and to be able to be there for another person. When the war ended, there was a man who was very broken. He lost everyone. He would walk the streets of Borough Park aimlessly except that there was a man who every day that when he was in Borough Park, he would schmooze with his broken fellow, <coughs> mamish like he had all the time in the world. Now that's called being naisei ba'olim chaveira. So who was this man who had plenty of time on his hands? It was the single busiest man in the globe. It was
was Rav Aaron Cutler. I've had the privilege of saying this over in front of every one of Rav Aaron's grandchildren in wherever country they live. Rav Aaron did not live in Lakewood, the yeshivas in Lakewood, and he went there for Shabbos. But weekdays, his apartment was in Borough Park, and whenever he was there, he would spend all the time schmoozing with this person. Why? Because there's nothing more important than being nice Ba'el. There's nothing more important than removing chayshev. There's nothing more important than letting people know that you care. One day, Reb Aaron turns to the man and says, Reb Yid, you will remarry, you'll have a daughter, and Be'ezus Hashem, I'll dance at her chasna. It was the last thing on his mind. As Reb Aaron said, the fellow remarried, he had a daughter, and the daughter became the apple of his eye. But when she was 12, Bas Mitzvah, Around that time, Rav Aaron died. And he obviously wouldn't be at the Chasana dancing. Ten or so years later, when this Chas girl was a Kala, was at her own Chasana, it was the middle of the first dance, Rav Aaron's only son, Rav Schneier, comes in. And he finds the Kala's father. He takes him, and he dances and dances and dances, Mamish Lebedev, the whole dance. When the dance ended, the father said to Reb Shnei, Rosh Hashiva, I didn't want to be Matriach, you to come. I'm so honored that you came. Why are you the Rosh Hashiva here? And Reb Shneir answered. Now, 10 years ago, right before my father was Nifter, he called me into his office. In fact, it was a very famous time that he called in. He spoke to Reb Shneir for three hours. And the first thing that he told me when he called me in was, there's a girl in Borough Park. I said that Pastor Hashem, I was going to dance at her chasna, but obviously that's not going to happen. Take down the father's name and address and follow the life of the girl. And when you hear that it's her chasna, he told Reb Schneier, he told me, go at the chasna and dance in my place. That's why I'm here. Now, I don't think anybody needs me to be master of the story. I do it being a son of Mordecai Lakewater, one of Reb Aaron's Talmidei Muhafim, I enjoy it. Reb Aaron, in that famous meeting, gave over thousands and thousands of pieces of information about the perpetuity of Klal Yisrael. But the first thing on Reb Aaron's mind was, there's a girl in Borough Park I told the broken father I would dance at the chasna since it's not going to happen. I want you, Reb Schneier, follow her life in 10 years. Go and dance at her chasna. I hope I understand the profundity of that, Misa, as well as anybody who's listening. It's lo yi yuman ki super. Pile, 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 Because Reb Aaron understood that there isn't anything more important than removing Chaysha and letting people know that you care. In fact, why did God put the heart on the left side? The left side is not your prominent side, it's the right side. And no one could take offense, I'm a lefty and I know it's true. The right side, the Yad Yamin, so why did God put the heart on the left side? And the heart is the most vital part of the body. What's it doing on the left, not the right? The answer is, and I'll single you out, you've been so kind to me. When I face you, my heart is on your right. And when you face me, your heart is on my right. And your heart was not created for you. That's selfish. Your heart was created for your wife and your husband and your child and your parent and your sibling and your amicable and your neighbor and the unaffiliated Jew. Your heart is to be on the right side of every person that you face. So yes, figuratively, the heart is on the right side. The vision of the Rebbe B'nai Brach, Rebbe Yisrael, Zoler Gesund and Starzayim, a couple of years ago, a chassid came to him and told him 
that he was making a wedding the next night. And he asked for a bracha. It was his first wedding, but it was bittersweet. As his young wife had just died, and he was making the first wedding on his own. The Rebbe gave him a beautiful bracha. I want to tell you it's important because with every story I say, it has to be every pitchifka and nuance and cuticle emmas. I always said this story one way with the next sentence. This past summer when I had a schuss to lead a trip to Spain, Gibraltar, Morocco, Shabbos, I was speaking in Gibraltar and I said over this Misa. And a family member came over and corrected a detail. And it makes the story that much more spectacular. I always said the next sentence, that the next night at about 3, 4 a.m. after the mitzvah tans, that the vision Sarebbe told the man the night before, after the mitzvah tans, come to my house. That's not true. Four in the morning, the man had come home from his child's chasna without his wife. She passed away. And there was a knock on his door. He opened it, and the vision Sarebbe himself from Yisrael was standing there. Maisa shahaya kafaya. He sits down with the person and he says to him, which hot dish by the chassan's dish was the best one? You told me you bought new shoes for the kids. How did they fit during dancing? There's always no show place cards. How many people didn't show? For the main dish, what went better, the fish or the meat? Was the second dance Lebedic? And did this sorbet melt because it was served late? And these types of questions for about an hour. When the hour ended and the man left together, the, excuse me, the vision Rebbe left together with his Gabai, the Gabai respectfully said, why did we do that at 4 a.m.? And I see from your facial responses, which I appreciate so much, you people get it. The vision Rebbe looked and said, what is the first thing that a person does when they come home two in the morning from a bar mitzvah or from making a chasana? They sit down with their spouse over a glass of tea and they discuss every detail, every page, everything about the simcha. Who was this man going to sit down with? Who was this man going to talk to? I came at four in the morning to discuss meatballs and sorbet and chicken and shoes and place cards and dancing so we should have somebody to talk to. Maisa shahaya kachaya. That's a miser. Because there isn't anything more important, they're removing chaysha. And if the vision of Sarebbe can speak about chicken at 4 a.m., and a barn can tell her of Shneir, Yibodah ben Chayim l'chayim, first and foremost, follow her life and dance at her chasana, so what about me and you? It's called being nice ba'el chavera. Rav Shleimah Zalman, Urba. Zechah Tzavik, the Kodesh of Rocha, was once approached with the following shayla. There was a man earlier in the week that was walking together with his son. The son was to be bar mitzvah that Shabbos. And he sees it, the friend coming in the front says, oh, I can't wait to be at the bar mitzvah this Shabbos. And I get to hear your yingle Lane, the special haftaira. Special haftaira means one that isn't for usual for the parasha, part for Torah, Zohar, Shkolom, Zohar, I will be honest, I don't know which special one it was, but it was one of them. The man turns white. What? He forgot that it was a special haftaira. He taught his kid the regular haftaira, and his kid couldn't pick up so quick it took a year. And now it's three days before the bar mitzvah. I can't teach him a special one. What should I do? He goes to Rav Shleim Zalman and he presents the question. Rav Shleim Zalman says, even though really we should read the special haftarah, but in this case, in this case, I ask him that the boy could read the regular haftarah and tell people, as they ask him to Shleim Zalman. Shabbos morning, they come to shul, 
and sitting in the shul before davening already in his 80s, it was a walk north of an hour was Rav Shleim Zalman in Paisek Hadar. He runs over the father, Rosh Hashiva, Paisek Hadar, what are you doing here? Rav Shleim Zalman said, I know you have my psaq. But I figured by Kriya Satayar, when you give my psaq, there might be a few minutes where people wonder, question, ask, and for those few minutes you're going to have Inui Hadin, you're going to have the proper English word is angst. And I didn't want you and your Yingala to go through that, so I walked here and I'm sitting here for davening, because if I'm here, nobody's going to say anything. There aren't any words in any vocabulary to properly describe that Misa. But Vaisdai Sarkidaila Yisrael know how to remove Chaysha, how to put a heart on the right, how to let somebody know that you care. My father, Haramor Ashapiro Zatzal, he always said the following I'd like to tell you my Balabat and the Spal and Kibbutz that before every part I say, this one's the best. This is really the best. But about this one, I mean it. I can guarantee one thing. It's a 30-second bar. It will change your life, and you'll never forget it. And there was nothing exaggeratory about that comment. My father wondered, how could it be that the Hebrew word for soul to be alive is neshama? <coughs> and the Hebrew word to be void and empty, to feel desolate, is neshama. You can look up the Avtair of Parshas Torah, which we read a month ago. It uses the word Eretz neshama four times. How could that be? They're both four letters, and they're both identical or almost. Nekuda is nun shin menhei, neshama, 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 neshama. One means I'm alive, and the other means why should I get up in the morning? My father would say the only difference between neshama and neshama is under the shin of neshama is a kamatz. Under the shin of neshama is a pata. If you want to watch my hands, it will be a bit more clear. You have the word neshama, there's a pata. What does a pata look like? It's a line just like this. How do I turn a pata? into a kamatz. Underneath, I add a little support. And when you add a little support, you create a neshama. That's the whole enchilada, the whole guacamole, the entire story. People who don't have support feel like it's a life of chayshe. But if we would add a little support, we turn the patach into a kamatz, we create a neshama. And when you create a neshama, people like Rav Shleim Azalim, like Rav Aram, like the Vishnu Tzarebbe, people believe in themselves. I don't know if people here are from Baltimore, but if people know, in Baltimore I had an uncle who was a legend. His name was Rabbi Yavid Steiner. He obviously worked with the Beis Yaakov of Europe. I'm glad you know. Rabbi Teller, head of Teller, wrote a book about my uncle, a matter of principle. My uncle, Rabbi Yavid Steiner, was one of the greatest Makanchen for girls in the country. He was a legend. When my cousins were sitting Shiva for my uncle Binyamin, somebody came in and said, I want to tell you about your father. This is what they're telling my cousins, Rabbi Steiner. Want to hear what an amazing person he is? A couple months ago, before he died, it was Arab Yom Kippur, and he was in the cemetery in the Mesa Forest, and he was davening. <coughs> And he saw me, this is what the person says to my cousins in the Shiva home, he saw me davening, 
and he stopped his job in the Arab Kippur and he ran over to me and said, you have an older sister in Shaduchim and you just switched to this and this yeshiva. You have to look for a boy for your sister. How about this one? How about this one? How about this one? It's your achrayas and obligation to look for somebody for your sister. He tells my cousins, could you imagine it was Arab Yom Kippur and your father is davening and all he had on his mind was to run over to me to do a shit up for my older sister. Is he not a tzaddik Rabbi Yom Steimer? Naisei ba'aylem chaveira. My cousins looked at the man and said, that's a great, great story, but it's not totally accurate. Our father was in the cemetery and it was Ariel and Kipper, but he wasn't dominant. He just came from the doctor and the doctor told our father at my Steinberg, lights out, it's over. There's nothing we can do. Start preparing. On the way home, Ariel and Kipper, he stopped in the cemetery and he was walking around between graves to write down and tell us that our mother where he wanted to be buried. Next to his mashkiach, the David Kronblast, the mashkiach from Ner Yisrael, or next to my Bubby and Zaidi, which means his in-laws. So when you saw our father, he was actually walking between graves to pick where he wanted to be buried. And so yes, even while a man was picking his burial spot to come home and tell his wife, he had nothing on his mind other than someone else. I think the reason I like the topic Naisei Ba'ilam Chaveirai is because it's so reachable and attainable. People say the difference between the generation two, three ago and now is when our grandparents and great-grandparents made food, did you notice all the food had one commonality? What did my bubbies and zaydis and yours make? They made knei luch, krems luch, Rava luck, tag luck. Luck, what can I do for you? Today, what do we eat? Bisli, pre lee, nestle, and for the healthy people, broccoli. <laughs> My nephew said we used to play Kuga luck, and today we play Monopoly. But the truth is, it cannot, God forbid, be a Lee society. Allah society means with a little support I can create in a shama. It means I'll remove darkness by putting my heart on your right. It's what Rabbi Aaron did in Borough Park. It's what the Shlema Zalman did on Shabbos. It's what the Vision Tzareba did when he went to the man for in the morning. It's what my brother-in-law's friend did, that person did when he paid $120 because 40 years ago he wasn't that boy. That's what my uncle Rabbi Yaman did when he was looking for his own burial spot. The nice part about Naisei Ba'el Chaveira is it's so reachable and attainable. Every year I go to Eretz Yisrael for the yard site of my father's Atzal. He died almost 22 years ago. He's buried in B'nai Brach. A few years ago when I went, the daughter, we were just mentioning my daughter, that daughter, she was learning in Eretz Yisrael, so I stayed an extra day or two. Unbeknownst to me, but while I was in the air, 35,000 feet up, the world changed. I'm referring to the morning of the Hard Oak Massacre. If anybody ever wants to know if the world could change in eight minutes, it started at 6.59 a.m. and was finished at 7.07 a.m. It was the most surreal experience. The next day I was asked to be given a tour by Rabbi Rubin of the Shul B'nai Taira. I then went with one of the Rosh Yeshiva, Mir and Yitzchak Ezrafi. We were being Menachemovel. Four families, four almanas, almost 30 asylum on the same street. It was surreal. <coughs> Unbeknownst to me, while I was in the air, speeches were set up for me in yeshivas and seminaries to try to give chizom. The last one of the day, when I landed, it was in the middle of three of the Leviathans. 
I spoke in a few places, it was Mambish Tisha Bav. And then my daughter, who was in BJJ, I went and I spoke in her seminary starting at about midnight. The tears, the bechiyas, the pain was unimaginable. And there I said the following of our I knew that it was powerful. I did not realize how powerful there, the next day, some of the girls made a song with lyrics. Of course, I, I didn't hear it. My daughter shared it with me. And it became a thing, mamish of power on steroids. And here's the book. The first Balaturim in Parshas Ve'ezchanan is speaking about Maisha Rabbeinu and his desire to enter Eretz Yisrael. He prayed 515 tefillahs. We know that he did not end up being allowed in because of hitting the rock. That's not the point of this word. But when he was davening 515 tefillahs and he wanted to be let in, says the Balaturim, he said these words. Chizakti es Yisrael. I gave chizak to a yid. Can I go in and that's us? I know he was turned down, but that's not germane to this var. The Jibo Dayan of Cats of Montreal explains the Balaturim. Envision for a minute your Maisha Rameh. You died in 515 Trilos. And now the Rebaita Shalaylam says, You got one ticket. And one ticket only to make it work. What will it be? If we would be Maisha Rabbeinu or speaking, we would say in the schus that I was in the Mechado HaTayra, in the schus that I was on our Sinai 40 days and 40 nights, in the schus that I was the Nisein HaTayra, in the schus that by the burning bush I spoke with the Shechina Pe'el Pe'adaber, in the schus that there was never a Navi or a Meir be a strong kid, Maisha Rabbeinu. Maisha Rabbeinu has one chance and one chance only. And he doesn't say, I was the Makabar Atayr or the Naisen Atayr. He doesn't say, I was on our Sinai or that I was there 40 days. He doesn't say, I was by the Sna and I spoke with the Shekhinah. He doesn't say, like, come Navi and my Rabbi Yisrael. He doesn't say any of that. He says one thing, Chizak the Es Yisrael. When a Yid was dead, I was there for him. Ulai Yerachim Allah. Please, Bairi Yerachim. Can I go in? Because at the end of the day, when everything clears away, and you and I have one ticket, and I mean one ticket only, Rebite Shalaya, please answer my tefillahs, there's one thing, Chizak the Es Yisrael. Did you help a fellow you? Were you nice say Ba'il Chaber? Did you create an Ashon? Did you put your heart on somebody's right? And b'schus dem, ula yirachim alai. But that's the ticket. As we start to conclude, again, not because I want to, but because it's Chalamoy, people have a full day of excursions and places to go. I can't even tell you how honored I am that so many came now. I was just speaking to my mother, she should live and be well, and she says, people come on Kol Hamoe during the day? I said, I'll let you know. <laughs> but I'm so honored that so many people came, and you should talk about a day filled with Ruchmius and Gashmius and excursions and enjoyment. I will take a 30 second PR promotional message to tell you that there is another speech this evening. I believe it's called for 515. I, I, I hope you can make it. The title for that one is The Power of Speech, The When to Speak and a Time to Remain Silent. I can tell you it's enormously, enormously, ginormously powerful. If you can come and even invite others, Ashrecha, Bashrei Bevecha. It's 515. It's very, very powerful. I'll actually say it now so I can keep my word. I mentioned to grandchildren of the DK 
Mikhail Hador, the brother Hador, of Yankit Kamenetsky. I'm privileged that they're here, that I'm going to say over to end a nice with their Yankit that is beyond bully. But I'm going to, I'm a nice guy, so I'm going to do even better than that. I feel badly that the grandchildren came again and again thinking each lecture was going to happen. But I'm a smart guy. I string them along till the last one, so they have to. But because I feel badly, I'm not going to tell you one Reb Yankiv Maisa. I'm going to tell you two Reb Yankiv Maisas. One at the beginning and one at the end. In Sogai, both are mamish fast in Resikno. Two unbelievable Maisas with Yuzayda. So it's 5.15. It's about the power of speech. I hope you can make it, and I hope you encourage others to come as well. So now we have to conclude. In Shir Hashirim, you know we're going to read Shir Hashirim on Shabbos. The most powerful puzzle. Hashmi'ini es kaileich ki kaileich hare. I'll listen to your voice because you have a voice that's sweet. The Radomsky Rebbe, I want to tell you, this is my favorite shot. And I mean it. Here I mean it. I really, really mean it. The Radomsky Rebbe said, the word Arev is not to be translated as Arev from sweet, like the Harevna, but Arev is from the word Kol Yisrael Arevim Zebazeh, which means we're responsible for each other. The Rebbe Shalom says, Hashmi'ini es kailei. You want me to listen to your voice and your tefillahs? Then there's one answer. Ki kailei are. When you have a voice of arevus, of responsibility, of kol yisrael arevim zebazet, I'll listen to you. The redemption then adds something that's beyond stunning. Of all three of us, Avram Yitzchak Yaakov, who best taught us this Sarevus of getting along and caring, Yaakov Avinu. Amongst the 12 Shvatim, we know that there was Sinna and Kinna. But at the end of the day, what does it say about the 12 Shvatim? Yachat Shifta Yisrael, everybody got along. No one taught us this getting along or a better than Yaakov. So now I open your hearts, please. What's the name of the prayer that Avram established? Shachris. What's the name of the tefillah that Yitzchak established? Bimcha. And what's the name of the tefillah that Yaakov established? And don't say Mayrim. I'm Ashkenaz, I'm Litvish. We don't. It's called Arvis. Because Yaakov Avinu says, Dab in the prayer called Arvis. Tefillah's Mayrim is found in a sitter, page 282. Tfilas Arvis is 24 7. Yoko Yisrael Arevim Zebazet. I'm not paskening for you, but I dare say, while the Gemara says that Tfilas Mairim for women, it may very well be a Rashus voluntary. I dare say that's true about Mairim, but Arvis is obligatory. No man or woman should go to sleep at night checklist. I daven chaplet, I daven mint, I daven myron. Don't go to sleep unless you daven arvis. Arvis is to be nice, and chaveiro. It's to remove darkness. It's to let people know that you care with a heart on their left side. It's to add support and create a neshama. It's the half a dozen stories we said. Because when Moshe Rabbeinu had one chance, it was Chizak the Es Yisrael. Be a Yid that has a Christ. Rabbi said to conclude, how do you spell that key word of Judaism? A Christ. It tells you everything you need to know about life. Aleph, you have to have a Christ to yourself and make sure you're on the proper path. Aleph Ches, the next letter, Ach. Do you take care of your brethren, your family? Aleph Ches, Reish, Acher. We don't live in a cocoon and a bubble. Take care of everybody. Aleph Ches, Reish, Yud. 
spells the word Acharai. Turn to a Yid and say, Acharai, follow after me. Please let them see I'm genuine and sincere. The next letter of Acharai is Alpes Reish Yud Vav. Acharav. They'll see your Falesluch, they'll see your Prezemluch, they'll see you're the real deal, and they'll feel comfortable following after you. What's the last letter of Achrayas? Aleph Bez Reish Yud Vav Sof. The first letter is an Aleph, the last letter is a Tuf. Aleph to Tuf. True Achrayas is Aleph to Tuf. A to Z, Suf to Nuts, beginning to end. Not just with people, well, you come from my Shtetl, we dress similar, we have the same Havara, that's cloning, that's not Achrayas. Olive to yourself, ach to your family, achar to everyone, acharai be real, acharav will sense it, olive to tov, beginning to end. May it be the will of the Rebbeinah Shalaylam. Hashmi'ini as chayle. Please listen to our tefillahs. Sorais amcha merubim. People are davening for shalom bayis and for parnasa, for gezunt and for shaduchim. For Yiddish and Achas. Rebina Shalaylam Hashmi'ini as Kailech, please listen to us. Ki Kailech Are. Every day you and I, we and us, will dive in Tvilas Arvis. We'll have a Christ. We'll create an Ashama. And let's be Zaytan to remove Chaisha once and for all and have our Tvilas answered. Once Chaisha is removed, it will be replaced with the ultimate of life, that of Ayrai Shal Mashiach. I hope to see everyone later today at 5.15. He has such a sweet yid, he thought I'm giving you the tour of Yankiv Mices now. <laughs> Dumb, I'm not. At 5.15, you'll get one, and before I catch my plane, you'll get the other. And they're both game changers. Okay, can I just give the watch back? Thank you. I just want to give the rule off. It was to you. Give my name to me. Put it on. Put it on. I have, I have. It's so sweet. Yeah, 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 I have.
So, Jack is your brother. If you would tell Yonder. But he has a son who's living by me. And uh should be shimmy's son. No, Ari is there. Oh, yeah. The whole young kid. Most folks. My shimmy's son. No, Ari is also. Just might. Yeah. 
So he said to me, yeah, I'm going to see Michael because I'm going to the Hazana on, uh, on Monday. And then I remember the other was in Marina Del Rey. I didn't realize that when I was in the house, but that it was that one. Oh my gosh, I was on Marina, yeah. We were around this city. Thank you, thank you. But don't forget Yankel, send them regards. And Jim, one year you're in. Send them regards, send them regards. Sayo, please send regards. And thank you for what you told me. So when you pass those, tell him what you told him. And add that whatever you paid for was worth it. Ah! But can you tell him it would be a favor to me? In fact, you don't even have to tell him, Rabbi Shapiro said to tell him. Of course not. So I'm so, I now am so happy that I put that last link that that was the one in the arena. Why would I even remember that error of face on? Because the nephew told me. What's his nephew? Yes, yes, yes. Had a great time with him. He had a great time. He had a great time. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, you know, my grandparents and, you know, Javi. Yeah, hello. Uh -huh. Had a great time. Oh, she did. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to grab some. It, it looks like the uh, right Bishop, forgive me for saying this, like, uh, I, I, I like, certainly know this. I, I mean, I also just lost 40 pounds, so I guess, you know, it's worth noticing. Hey, one time, we meet up every day. And it's interesting because we're That's so sweet of you. That's so sweet.
Hey, 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 check. Check, hey.